Van Johnson was the well-mannered nice guy on screen you wanted your daughter to marry. This fair, freckled and invariably friendly-looking MGM song and dance star of the 40s emerged a box office favorite, 1944-1946, and second only to heartthrob Frank Sinatra during what gossip monger Hedda Hopper dubbed the Bobby Soxer Blitz era. Johnson's musical timing proved just as adroit as his career timing for he was able to court World War II stardom as a regimented MGM symbol of the war effort with an impressive parade of earnest soldiers. He may have been a second-tier musical star behind the likes of Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly, but his easy smile, wholesome, boy-next-door appeal and strawberry blonde good looks earned him a solid shot at box office stardom while the big boys, i.e., MGM stars, were off to war. When they returned, Johnson amiably relinquished his golden boy pedestal, but his popularity did not wane. In retrospect, his dramatic talents seemed overly scrutinized. Dot for he was very capable. Besides, he worked another three decades on stage, screen and TV. Dot and always as a star. Johnson was born Charles Vandell Johnson in Newport, Rhode Island, the only child of Loretta, Snyder, and Charles E. Johnson. His paternal grandparents were Swedish, and his mother was of German, and a small amount of Irish, ancestry. Johnson endured a lonely and unhappy childhood as the sole offspring of an extremely aloof father, who was both a plumber and real estate agent by trade, and an absentee mother, she abandoned the family when he was three, the victim of alcoholism. A paternal grandmother helped in raising the young lad. Happier times were spent drifting into the fantasy world of movies, and he developed an ardent passion to entertain, taking singing, dancing and violin lessons during his high school years. He disregarded his father's wish to become a lawyer and instead left home following graduation to try his luck in New York. Early experiences included chorus lines in reviews, at hotels and in various small shows around town. A couple of minor breaks occurred with his 40-week stint in the New Faces of 1936, review, making his Broadway debut, and in a vaudeville club act, based around star Mary Martin, called, Eight Young Men of Manhattan, that played the Rainbow Room. He served as understudy to the three male leads of Rogers and Hart's popular musical, Too Many Girls, in October of 1939 and eventually replaced one of them. Actor Richard Colmar left the show to marry reporter Dorothy Kilgallen. He also formed a lifelong and career-igniting friendship with one of the other leads, Daisy Arnaz. Johnson made an inauspicious film debut with Arnaz in Too Many Girls, 1940, when the musical was eventually lensed in Hollywood but he was cast in a scant chorus boy part. Following a stint on Broadway in Pal Joey in 1940, Warner Brothers signed Van to a six-month contract. He went on to co-star with Faye Emerson in Murder in the Big House, 1942, but they dropped him quickly feeling that his acting chops were lacking. It was Arnaz's wife Lucille Ball, who had recently signed with MGM, who introduced Van to Billy Grady, MGM's casting head and instigated a successful screen test. With the studio's top male talent off to war, Van served as an earnest substitute donning fatigues in such stalwart movies as Somewhere I'll Find You, 1942, The War Against Mrs. Hadley, 1942, and The Human Comedy, 1943. Van also replaced actor, war pacifist Lou Ayres in the Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gillespie, film series after Ayers was unceremoniously dumped by the studio for his unpopular beliefs. Stardom came, and at quite a price, for Van when he was cast yet again as a wholesome serviceman in A Guy Named Joe, 1943. During the early part of filming, he was severely injured in a near-fatal car crash, he had a metal plate inserted in his skull, which instantly gave him a 4F disqualification status for war service. In danger to being replaced on the film, the two stars of the picture, Spencer Tracy, who became another lifelong friend, and Irene Dunn, insisted that the studio work around his convalescence or they would quit the film. The unusually kind gesture made Van a star following the film's popular release and resulting publicity. Van's career soared during the war years. His boyish charm and fair, attractive features made him the resident heartthrob and he rode on a crest of popularity not only in musicals, Two Girls and a Sailor, 1944, Easy to Wednesday, 1946, but in airy comedies, Weekend at the Waldorf, 1945, and, of course, more war stories, 
30 Seconds Over Tokyo, 1944. When the big stars such as Clark Gable, James Stewart and Robert Taylor returned to reclaim post-war stardom, Van willingly resigned himself to second dramatic leads, but he remained a high-profile musical star opposite the likes of June Allison, Esther Williams and Judy Garland. He continued to demonstrate his dramatic skills in such well-regarded films as Command Decision, 1948, State of the Union, 1948, Battleground, 1949, Brigadoon, 1954, and The Kane Mutiny, 1954. MGM's Golden Age, phased out by the mid-1950s and, with it, Van's strong film career took a sharp decline. The studio released him after he co-starred with Elizabeth Taylor in The Last Time I Saw Paris, 1954, while he continued to freelance and show strength in other pictures such as The English Made the End of the Affair, 1955, with Deborah Kerr. Miracle in the Rain, 1956. Opposite Jane Wyman, The Bottom of the Bottle, 1956, with Joseph Cotton, 23 Paces to Baker Street, 1956, co-starring Vera Miles, Kelly and Me, 1957. Partnered with a Dog, and Web of Evidence, 1959. The Bloom Was Falling Off the Rose. In the late 50s and early 1960s Van again capitalized on his musical talents by reinventing himself as a nightclub performer and musical stage star. He made a wonderful Harold Hill in several productions of The Music Man, and graced a number of musical and light comedy vehicles on the regional and dinner theater circuits, including Damn Yankees, Guys and Dolls, Bells Are Ringing, On a Clear Day, Forty Carats, Bye Bye Birdie, There's a Girl in My Soup, and I Do. I Do. He never delved heavily into TV until the 1970s and then appeared on a number of shows, earning an Emmy nomination for his participation in the miniseries Rich Man, Poor Man, 1976. In later years, he grew larger in girth but still continued to work. He earned respectable reviews after replacing Gene Barry as Georges in the smash gay musical, La Cage Ox Fall, in 1985. His last musical role was as Cap, Andy in, Show Boat, in 1991, and his last several movies were primarily filmed overseas in Italy and Australia. Van was married only once but it was constantly dissected under a microscope by the tabloids as well as the public. The marriage ended quite bitterly. Typically in the closet as a high-ranking actor of the 1940s, he was extremely close friends to MGM actor Keenan Wynn and his wife. However, Van wound up marrying Wynn's ex-wife, one-time stage actress Eve Abbott, right